It's been a while since I made a video like this where I just uh, put on the camera and had like an open, honest conversation with you guys. Uh, no script, no bullet points. Maybe I had two camera angles already rigged up this camera. Who knows? Let's see what happens. But I have a lot of things on my mind that I want to share with you guys. And uh, I believe I owe it to the community. Now, if you don't know me and you're here for the first time, then my name is Artolur. I'm a full-time photographer and a content creator or a full-time content creator, I'm actually nowadays. And I've been doing YouTube for the last eight years, uploading every week. And for the last three years, it's been my full-time job. I've also uploaded a whole lot on TikTok and Instagram. And collectively, I built a like following of 1.3 million across all the major social media platforms. So the personal brand, that's the size of the personal brand. I feel like in this time, I've gathered a whole lot of experience. I'm absolutely obsessed. I'm here all the time in the studio. And there are a lot of things that I want to share with you, both up and coming uh, creators. I know that a lot of you watch who, who like to become and be in this position where you can like make uh, this your living. Because I mean, it is like, don't get me wrong. It's awesome. I mean, speaking about a subject that you like to the world and making that as your living, you just have a camera, computer and an internet connection. It, I mean, what is better? But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's also really hard and there are things about it that are absolutely fucked up. And there are things that are like, you know, we will dive into those things in a second. So eight years ago, I decided to make a YouTube channel. That channel was about magic, uh, card magic. At the time, card magic was like my absolute, uh, like that was my obsession. And I it was a semi-professional magician at the time and I wanted to become like an absolutely full time, full time. And I was trying to hustle as much as I can getting all the gigs. And I thought like, hey, if I make a YouTube channel, I already had a little bit of experience with filming and editing with skate videos when I was a teenager. So if I make a YouTube video, YouTube channel, maybe that can help me get more gigs. So I did. And I decided also right at the bat to make videos every single week, which was, uh, that, that was such an important factor too. And I was interviewed the other day and I was asked, why did you decide to do it every week? Like right off the bat also with a brand new channel and you know nothing about it. I've been pondering this question in my head and thinking about like the correct answer. And I think the answer comes down to the fact that I spent so many years uh, where I was obsessed about powerlifting from 14 to 20, like one, two or three, something along that, those years, I like obsessed about powerlifting. I competed in Iceland Open when I was 17, put a national record in deadlift. Everybody who's been involved in fitness or, or any type of strength training or, or something like that, you guys know the importance of rap. You could just get drilled with it because nobody gets strong of going to the gym only once. You need to like just, Go every single week, multiple times a week, even if you feel like you're not. And on top of that, your diet needs to be on point and all these things. So you get like, you really understand that you're doing this because your future self is going to be really strong. And I just applied that to YouTube too, because I wanted to, I really want this to be my job. And little did I know also that I fell into a deep rabbit hole of just loving the process of creating content. It is so fun to just put on the camera or come with an idea, scripting your videos out and creating it and then pushing it out to you guys to be judged. <laughs> but that's also a, like reality of YouTube that you are exposing yourself. And that is, that is pretty hard. I mean, it, it's, it's one of the things that I've, uh, struggled a little bit with, not too much. I honestly don't give too many fucks what people think about me. And I think that is, has been good, but it's, it sucks when you get a bad comment or one like that. But it's also, it is it is also hard, in my opinion, um, the fact that these views are public. It's so based on how many views you get. And, and when they're public, then you may be like in periods where your videos are not performing as well. That is hard. And that now, now I'm talking from a position where I am now, where I'm doing this as a living. I can see, okay, now I'm not getting as many views and everybody's seeing it. Do you think I suck? On top of that, one thing that really messes with my head, and I'm sure all of you who's watching, who's into YouTube can relate to this, is the fact that you instantly know how your video is performing. You see, when you've been creating something and you pour your heart into it and you think it's really good, and then it performs bad, like 10 out of 10, which means that it's the worst performing video of the last 10, that sucks. It sucks so much that I honestly, every time, 
I, I feel like I should quit. I feel demolished, you know? And then the vice versa, when I get to one out of 10, then I feel so good. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm on top of the world. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm the shit. And the mood swings there are so intense. And it's so weird that I'm basing that off like some numbers on the screen of like, and then if people are liking or not, people I don't even know. <laughs> so that is so, this is not like what normal job looks like. And it's so strange. However, that is not like the, the hardest part. You see in the beginning too, man, I made videos for over five years without almost anybody watching. And I don't think uh, many of you guys like understand the, the work that can go into this and the endurance, at least in, at least for me, I can only speak for what I've been through, but I have friends too that are full time and we share very similar stories. Just the endurance of doing this, showing up every week, making these videos, pouring your heart and soul into it, and nobody is watching for years. I, I know that people are probably laughing at me also because I'm, I'm from Iceland and I speak English and I'm trying to make it on YouTube, you know, and somebody, I, I'm just guessing that somebody like the, with him in school, like, yeah, look at Arnulur, he's trying to become a YouTuber. Wow, I, I, that, I'm just guessing that that is, that is the case because um, we are humans, you know, and people make fun of you until you, like, until they, you make it and then they don't, you know. And I know other people that want to become YouTubers and they like keep it a secret for a very long time because they're embarrassed. And this is a little bit embarrassing for sure. Also speaking to a camera is so hard in the beginning. It's so hard. Getting natural, being like, it's, it's, if, ugh, it's, that is tough. And we can dive a little bit that the second, but there are more things also. I just really want to emphasize on the fact that it sucks, like truly sucks getting no views month after month, even year after year, especially if you're like me and you don't really have any other plan to fall back on. There's no plan B and this is what you're like going for. And a few years in, you see your friends, they're getting degrees, they're getting good jobs and you're still there trying to make it on YouTube. It's laughable. It's like, it's, you know, it really is. And I think this is what like unites all of us that have made YouTube our job, like going through this period and it's tough, I'm telling you. And if you want to make this your living, I think you have to gear up that this might, or it's very likely it's gonna be the reality for you too. But anywho, I made the channel and the magic channel and was also traveling a lot at that time with my backpack and the, just the cards and backpack and went traveling around the globe. And in that period, this is 2016, 2017, Casey Neistat was like the shit. He was the king on YouTube and Sam Coulter was also the shit. And I, everybody was influenced by them. And I was making these vlog videos. And all of a sudden I was like, hey, I should make a, like, I should make a um, video channel as well, or a channel where I can share my passion for photography and filmmaking. Cause somewhere along those lines, I'd understood the importance of niching down. And if you, like, if you are um, at beginning stages of your, content creation <laughs> career or you want to do this, then understand that niching is really important. Think about this like this. You're making a channel about a subject that hopefully you'd like talking about as it does make sense in the long run. But then, then you're finding people that also like that subject. So in my case, making a magic channel and then a photographer channel, I would be splitting the audience. It's better to make two separate channels. So I, I decided that did that, but I, I'd worked so hard for the Magic Channel. I couldn't let go of the Magic Channel just yet because I had had like 2000 subscribers or something like that. And I put like two years of my life into it. So I did both of the channels weekly for uh, at least a year, I think. I think there was something like 2018, late 2018 or 2019 where I ditched the Magic Channel. And at the time too, I'm also doing Instagram content. Yeah, you know, start Instagram and YouTube same time. Instagram back then was incredibly hard to grow, but I still pushed out a lot. I did this one year challenge in 2018 to 2019, I think it was. I post one photo every single day on Instagram for 365 days in a row. Crushed that. And that was done not to try to grow the account, just to become a better photographer, because it pushed me to make uh, photos every day. And it actually, like that worked. I, my photos took a whole, like a leap. Now, if you can, I would suggest you do something like that too. And that is just come down to the wraps too. Uh, you know, the more wraps you can do, the better you're gonna become. Now, I'm not making any cash there at the moment. And I'm not gigging anymore with the magic because I'd moved to Sweden. I had no network. So while I was traveling, I met up this beautiful Swedish girl and uh, we fell in love and ended up moving here to Stockholm, which I've been living now in Sweden for five years. And I had no, my magic gigging couldn't done here because it's all about networking. 
And I was like, should I get a job or I, YouTube is making me anything. I'm putting an insane amount of times into it. I just like, there's weekly content coming out on all of these platforms, but I'm not, there's not earning anybody. Any, nobody's watching it. You know? it's just like, sometimes I think back and go like, why? Like, but I think the why is just, I love creating and it was, it's, it's so fun. But when I came here, I took the decision to keep on pushing up the YouTube, but I need to have some money being like being a person has been like self-employed my entire life i set up a small business where i buy handmade uh, viking jewelries this is my own design buy them abroad and i bought a bulk of it and then when it came i just went cold to this like tourist shops and museums here in stockholm and cold called a lot of shops around the country went to other cities too and they managed to get a few shops that, <laughs> that I was able to sustain myself. And this took that not that much time, so I could put a whole lot of time on the YouTube thingy. That worked quite well until COVID hit. Then, of course, the tourist industry, like everybody was locked down, the course, tourist industry was just like, bam. And there was no money to be found from the my little shop that or my little business that was like generating me a little bit. And uh, my girlfriend was also pregnant with our first kid. So I did, like I was in the crossroad again and I was thinking like, okay, I have, I think I had 5,000 subscribers on YouTube and just a few thousand on Instagram and a few thousand on TikTok. No, not earning anything like substantial, just have one dollar here or one dollar there. And I was at the crossroad, either go all in here or get a job and just, you know, <laughs> not, not maybe forget about it, but less volume. And I just decided, you know, fuck it, we go all in. And I went mayhem. And I think a few times in your life, you have this surge of energy and you just go for it. I was checking there if I put the uh, my record button on the uh, microphone. I can't tell you guys how often I filmed a video, forgot to put the record on the camera or the microphone. <laughs> but anywho, I went mayhem. I put one to three YouTube videos a week one to four TikToks a day, and then Instagram content as much as I could. I did that for months. And uh, that really pushed, and like I had already years of experience and years of content. And then that on top of it going just like all mayhem on it, it really like got my name out there, also made myself better content creator. So one thing that Editing Me wants to add is that I've actually checked how many videos I made on this channel and the Magic Channel, and on this channel it's like 400, what did I write? 441, and Magic Channel is 121. So total that makes 562 videos in seven and a half year, which comes down to 1.44 video on average every single week. <laughs> it's a lot and that is not taking into account all of the TikTok videos and TikTok content and Instagram content like the insane amount of those content that I've done now this is not me bragging I just want to like share with you the insane amount of work that goes into this and the commitment that is required and if you commit my friend then you can do this too I'm trying to exp show you guys here the insane amount of work that goes into it, or at least has done it for me. I had a lecture the other day, and after it, at least about content creation, and after it, a young guy came to, to, to me and he was like, hey man, it was awesome, nice to hear you speaking. Um, how do you find time for all of this? And my answer was just, I, uh, I just make time for it. At the moment, it is, it is, this, <laughs> it's, 21.30, so it's half 10. Can you see this? It's not catching focus. And it's the 23rd of December. It's Christmas tomorrow. And I'm here in the studio creating videos because I'm absolutely obsessed. And I know that if I want this to like become something more or just keep this going, I need to put in the time. Now, I'm not putting the same insane amount of volumes as was like then, but I'm still here all the time. And the, the, the sacrifices I've had to make are there, are there are a whole lot. And I think many people are not understanding the, 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 the I don't think many people are understanding the sacrifices that you have to do, or at least I and many of my friends too have had to done. For instance, I, I see uh, throughout these years, I've seen many people that have wanted to become creators. I want to become YouTubers. They've talked to me like, hey man, can I have any tips? I give them my tips. They get all motivated, psyched up, start to create content. I watch the channels 
it's going okay. Maybe even some of you I've seen have gotten some hits with 50 or 100,000 subscribe, no, subscribers uh, views, and it's a little bit momentum bi building up. And then there is something that happens there that you, you quit. Then when I come back a few months later, there hasn't been a, nothing uploaded. And I think there is this, like, there's both the understanding of the consistency is key, but it's also the, the understanding of the endurance of like, this is a, imagine this is like a massive marathon that never ends. And you just have to keep on, like it's a treadmill that never stops. And you have to, you have to just do it, you know? There's no getting all psyched up and, and stopping, then it's not gonna work. The, the chance of making it on YouTube is extremely slim. There has been uh, like tons of research on it and it's really hard, but it's possible. And this young gentleman that talked to me, the first thing I asked him was like, do you have kids? And he said, no. And then I was like, okay, then you have all the time in the world. Nobody cares. <laughs> you have no obligations, my friend. If you don't have kids, you can like do it all the time. I have two kids and I don't want to sacrifice or what I say, I don't want to, I do not want to compromise on the time I get with them because I understand this is limited. So how I've been doing for the last three years, firstly, me and my lady, we split the parents I leave 50-50 from day one. So there was two to three official working days a week, which was really hard. And also on top of that, having babies is really hard. And I had both talk two colleague kids. So last three years, I feel like I'm just exposing myself here, but like three last three years have been really hard. Uh, on me mentally and just really challenging um, and just f making everything work and showing up here every week has been hard for sure. Now this camera turned off, it's done finito, but we have this one still rolling. But the reason I'm telling you this is the sacrifices I've had to make have been uh, I've, my social life, I don't, like, this is it. I'm here in the studio or I'm somewhere out creating content. I used to train a whole lot. Uh, moving my body was like a big part of my life. I trained basketball my entire youth until I was like a teenager. I did powerlifting for very, very many years. I have four stripes on my blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Moving myself, I love it. But for the last years, that's been neglected totally because I'm here making sure that getting the content out, you know. And then now when we have kids, I don't want to sacrifice and compromise on the time with them. So that means that I'm compromising on the time with my partner, which is, which isn't easy, but what, what should you do when you have kids is really hard. And, uh, I, I want this to grow too. Now, the reason I've gone so hard at it for the last years kind of all boils down to the fact that I've just wanted it so much to me like being able to not only work from wherever I want in the world and also choose my time, you know, being my own boss, but also having total creative freedom is just so good. I mean, I can create whatever I want and talk about whatever I want. Ain't that pretty sick? To me, it's just, it just fills me with so much joy and it's been like my goal for so long. And now when I'm here, I mean, it's, it's awesome. Now, I know that I say all the time that anybody can do whatever they want in life. I mean, if I, just a random guy from Iceland, had the audacity to think that I can become a full-time YouTuber and went out and did it, then of course you can do that too. But I also know that there's a fact that most people simply aren't willing to eat shit for a serious amount of time in order to one day maybe be able to achieve their goals. However, when it comes to YouTube, the like beautiful thing is that you're only one video away from blowing up and making your dreams happen. But on the other hand, that video could also be 500 videos away. So my friend, get your head down, show up every single week, and no matter what, don't give up.